first things first, we're gonna have a look at the share prices of a few house builders. Okay, in the last five years, it's come from a high of 231, this is Taylor Wimpy, down to a low of 104. What about since when I was talking about in February, March, 124, and then about 20%. And although on the year it's slightly up, but from the highs, um, I think I was talking about it, March, April, I think I was talking about it. It's down 20%. Shame I didn't short it. Anyway, this video, we're talking about house builders and shorting house builders. Taylor Wimpy is one of the largest in the UK. Here there's Barrett Developments. What's happened? It's gone up in a day, about five days, up 2.5%. One month, down 8%. Six months, down 11%. Year to date. <clears throat> Again, it's kind of, hasn't moved that much on the year. But if you look at it, in March and April, when I was saying about shorting, it was a high of about 500 pence. It's down nearly 20%. I wonder if anyone shorted them. I don't know. They're valued at 4 billion. They've got a deceptive price to earnings ratio of seven and a dividend yields again, a bit deceptive of 8%. Just so you can see in the house building news here, plunging demand for new homes, right? Cuts construction target, I've seen that already. House prices drops. Let's click on this one. Yeah, so they're already slumping. So they're going to build a lot less homes. There's other stuff that's come out. You should definitely keep watching this video, guys, because there's a lot of value, I think, in this video. Tons. I've already shown how I'm able to sometimes predict things that come true, including, in this case, a housing, house builder crash and a housing crash. Um, I wanted to... I'm not going to go into the details today. I actually uh, thought about this again this weekend and thought I really need to start acting on this. This is ridiculous. I can't be right all these times and call about it excuse my language. Um, so I actually even re-looked at the videos I shot to remind myself of the options, how to short the housing market. One is to short the individual companies um, like Taylor Wimpy, Barrett Developments, Persimmon in the UK. Um, let's look at these guys. Five days, up 10% in five days. Wow. What about the month? Down 10% and six months down 26% year to date down 16% from a high of 1,400 in February, down 40%. Even when it went back up on the 2nd of May, my birthday, it's down about 30%. Guys, if you did an options on this, like I was talking, I wasn't suggesting or advising, I'm not a financial advisor. Of course I'm not, but I use financial logic. If you'd have put an option on in May for six months or a year, and the value of these, Prop, um, shares have gone down 30%, you know, in where are we? It's the 15th of July, two and a half months. My gosh, that option would have exploded in value. You know, you might have trebled your money by now, possibly. Anyway, um, what am I doing? Um, I'm thinking of ways. I think this is an interesting, uh, I think this is an interesting trade. I don't think it's over. You know, I, I sometimes do this. I find a trend and I don't pounce on it straight away. In 2010, I thought about investing in the house borders on the way up. Barrett Developments was about 30, 40 pence. Sorry, this is my wife's uh, makeup. She sometimes rests her head here. Uh, anyway, um, Barrett Developments. I saw them at 30, 40, 50 P. I thought, Jesus, they're, they're valued at less than their net, net assets. I didn't do anything for months until they hit 100 P. Then I invested and then I sold out when they hit 600 P. Now on the reverse, you know, the housing market looks like it's turning, as I've been talking about for months and months and months. Um, I don't think this is the end of this trend. I think it's the start of this trend. Uh, and it's going to take further detail. Wow, that's thunder. Jesus, sorry about that. It's, it's going to really storm. Jesus. Anyway. Um, I don't think it's the end of this trend. I'm going to do a few more videos on how I'm researching this because... There's a lot of moving parts here. You've got the ETFs and they're quite complicated. You know, some of them are um, house building companies. Some of them are blends of all sorts of companies in the property space, higgledy piggledy smashed together. Um, the house builders themselves have unique um, aspects to them. For example, you know, the CEO of Barrett uh, Developments who I uh, have met and know a little bit and we have discussions occasionally. He's a smart guy, David Thomas, very, very smart. 
And I, I personally think Barrett's aren't going to do as badly as the others. Um, interestingly enough, I bet on Barrett's um, in 2010, 2011. They were not the biggest uh, house builder in the country then. They are now. And that shows you how good David Thomas was um, to get them. He used to be CFO. Now, obviously, he's been the CEO for many years. And um, each individual house builder, I guess what I'm getting at, has individual circumstances. They have a different land banks. They have different um, profiles in terms of where they invest and how they build and how much they build. Also, in terms of the new things that you may have seen in my other videos about the rem remediation regulations the UK have put in place where house builders need to rebuild or um, remediate works on properties they built up to 30 years ago. And I know Barrett, Barrett Developments is spending, I think it's somewhere in the region of 200 million, something crazy on remediating properties just this year. So that's a, a lot of these elements as well. There's like the, there's the stuff to do with net zero and EPCs. And uh, there was this, this thing in, in the UK called Grenfell where there was a, an apartment block basically not exploded, but was, was damaged and a lot of people died in a fire. And all of this is impacting house builders. And there's a bunch of other things, interest rates, buyer demands, um, there's all sorts. And I think there's a lot to unpick. So you've got like ETFs, there's a lot to unpick because they're blended. There's all sorts of things. So you can also get UK and US ETFs. In the US, you can you can buy the mortgages. You can't buy them, I don't think, in the UK, unless if you guys know any more, let me know in the comment section below. And um, there's different size funds as well. Um, they go from, I think, I saw one in the UK is 500 million. In the US, they're like seven or eight billion. So there's a, there's a lot to unpick with the ETFs. There's a lot to unpick with the individual house builders, and there might be some things to unpick with the suppliers as well. So I'm not going to take any particular action right now. I'm making this video to give everyone a heads up. If they want to follow this trend, um, then subscribe to the channel and check check you know check out the videos I make. I'll probably make one one video a month, maybe two two videos a month, possibly maybe more on the short side um, about this because I want to I want to jump on this. I think I you know I found this trend uh, back in whenever it was February, um, and I started publishing. I think it was March April. And I would have got just enormous value had I had I started shorting um, or buying options, uh, put options. Then I didn't do anything about it. But I'm going to start thinking about it and I start researching more because I think there's individual risk in, in those particular ETFs and companies. And I'm going to try and quantify and understand those risks. And I'm going to do it. I'm going to be doing it on this channel. Um, so if you're interested in this, uh, make sure to like and subscribe. Um, if you don't know much about shorting, you can buy options where basically if you get the right timing, you'll do very well. Or you can you can bet on the underlying going down, which means you're um, you're you're basically betting on the points going up and down, you know, the share price. Just to give you an example, if you'd bet ten pounds a point for um, if you shorted per sim at ten pounds a point, you'd make four thousand pounds in the last couple of months. So you know, obviously, you need to put margin down, so you need to put deposit down which is your risk deposit, by the way, if it goes in against you, if it's the, the share prices go up. Um, but imagine you put on a hundred pounds a point, suddenly you've made 40,000 pounds in two months. Anyway, I don't know what's gonna happen, but I use financial logic. Hope you enjoy these videos. Make sure to like and subscribe. Remember guys, that knowledge is power, especially the right kind of knowledge and progress is everything. I'll see you guys in one of these upcoming videos, which I'm sure you'll like. Thanks and take care.